Hi everyone. Um, I'm here to do my video um, that I promised I was going to do and bear with me if I stumble on words. Um, it's been a rough couple of days um, and I have trouble with thoughts so you're going to see me looking and reading looking at my notes and reading my notes a lot um, to help me out um, because I do forget things and um, get tongue-tied all that sort of stuff and today of course my mouth is extremely dry so I may have to take a sip of water while I'm doing this but I know it's kind of rude but <laughs> so as you know I am here to explain about MS and also a little bit about my journey and challenges um, again you're gonna be seeing me look down at my notes quite often <laughs> so first of all um, what is MS MS is a disease of the central nervous system which is made up of the brain spinal cord and optic nerves in MS the immune system attacks the protective sheath that covers the nerve fibers and causes communication problems between your brain and the rest of your body um, this this sheath is called myelin um, eventually the disease can cause the nerves um, themselves to deteriorate or become permanently damaged um, MS um, causes lesions to the brain uh, spinal cord and optic nerves what causes MS there is still no known cause um, but there's many theories out there um, that they go on but there is still no known cause and there is no cure who gets MS anyone at any age can get MS from the very young to the very old although it is most common in adults um, and is usually diagnosed between the ages of 20 and 50 um, it is two to three more times uh, more common in women than it is in men um, it can be very difficult to diagnose um, since there is no single test for it and diagnose can often be missed delayed or incorrect uh, for some people it it can take 10 to 15 years to be diagnosed um, it can be challenging very challenging for physicians and can mimic other conditions and diseases that is why doctors usually run many different types of tests and scans to rule out other other things um, as well that can also act like MS uh, many people uh, with MS often will have comorbidities which means a person has um, one or more chronic uh, diseases or disorders at the same time um, there are disease modifying medications um, for most types um, but there are no medications like that for primary progressive MS um, which is what I have uh, there are only medications to treat the symptoms um, so you know with specific symptoms there are certain medications they can use um, there's actually four types of MS there's RMS, SPMS, PPMS and PRMS and I will explain to you what those what those are what those mean um, RRMS is relapsing remitting um, it is the most common form of multiple sclerosis and is what most people think of um, you know when they hear about people with multiple sclerosis um, because it is it is the one you hear of most often um, most people never even realize that there are uh, four types um, of MS about 85% of people with MS are initially diagnosed with relapsing remitting and in uh, our MS there are temporary periods called relapses flare-ups 
or exacerbations when new symptoms appear and then you have periods of remission. Um, SPMS is secondary progressive MS. Um, with this, symptoms worsen steadily over time with or without occurrence of relapses and remission. Uh, about 50% of those first diagnosed with RRMS will transition to the secondary progressive at some point. Uh, PPMS, which is primary progressive MS. This type is not very common and is one of the more rare, more debilitating types and occurs in only 10% of people diagnosed with MS. It has slowly worsening symptoms from the very beginning with no relapses or remissions, which means symptoms are 24 seven basically with no recovery periods. This is what I have. Then there's PRMS, which is progressive relapsing MS. It is the most rare uh, type happening in only about 5% of patients that are diagnosed. Um, it has a steadily worse disease state from the very beginning with acute relapses, uh, but no remissions with or without recovery. Um, there's many different symptoms um, with MS and no two people uh, diagnosed are the same. While there are some people who may only experience two or three symptoms, um, there can be others that might experience most or even all of them for that matter. Um, and unfortunately, I experienced quite a few. <laughs> um, you know, this is, you know, this is also why treatment and therapy is different for everyone and may or may not work for everyone. Um, so everybody's, you know, um, treatment or, you know, is, is, is different. Um, some of the more common symptoms are uh, fatigue, um, numbness and tingling, weakness, uh, dizziness and vertigo, um, sexual dysfunction, pain, emotional changes, anxiety, balance problems, walking difficulties, spasticity, vision problems, spasms, bladder problems, bowel problems, cognitive changes, and depression. Um, some of the less common symptoms are speech problems, tremors, breathing problems, uh, headaches, um, GI problems, which means gastrointestinal problems, um, swallowing problems, uh, seizures, itching, uh, coordination problems and sensitivity to heat and cold. Um, there's also, you know, like secondary symptoms, um, which are s symptoms arising as a result of a primary symptom. Um, so basically, it's kind of like a complication or just another issue as part of a an initial system or uh, symptom. <laughs> um, Amongst those, um, just a few are UTIs, uh, which can come from bladder dysfunction. Um, also, decreased bone density, loss of muscle tone, poor posture and trunk control, and shallow, inefficient breathing. Um, immobility can also lead to pressure sores. Um, this only begins to touch base about MS, but hopefully uh, will help you understand a little bit more about it and at least gives you some basics. Um, there are some things, um, sorry, I'm saying um a lot. <laughs> there are some things that are very annoying and <laughs> sometimes irritating to people with MS. When we say we are fatigued, it is not the same as being tired. So we get annoyed when people say, oh yeah, I am so tired today too, I need a nap. 
With fatigue, we just can't take a nap or drink caffeine, etc. and be ready to go again. There is nothing that really helps. Although doctors can prescribe certain medications that can kind of help push us through a day um, so we can somewhat function. Um, you know, it doesn't work 100%, um, but, you know, at least it does help. Also, when we tell people we are having memory or speech difficulty and they say something like, yeah, I forget things all the time too. Or, I get tongue-tied sometimes. It is very different. Um, there's no comparison. Our memory um, and speech difficulty is much more like people with Alzheimer's. Uh, in fact, um, that's what they compare it to. In fact, um, people with progressive MS can actually go on to actually develop some sort of dementia because of lesions on the brain. Also another big thing that people always say is you look great or you're looking really good or you look wonderful. You know just those types of things. Um, I know for the most part people mean well. Um, but let me tell you these are certain things that really do annoy people with MS. Um, because, like I said, I know people mean well for the most part, but if you ask most anybody with MS, you're going to get a lot of the same answers. Um, because I know for the most, you know, and even though you know, we are in pain or having a horrible day and really struggling, um, which I have been, <laughs> especially for about the last five days, does not mean we have to look bad or look sick. Um, our bodies are in, actually in a huge fight against themselves on the inside. Um, although there can be very noticeable things by parents as well, um, most people cannot see the big things. Also another annoyance is we don't want or need advice on what we should do or how to treat it or different remedies to try or to try certain diets. There are people who suddenly think they are experts on your disease. What we do really want is someone to just be there for us unconditionally to just lend a shoulder to cry on or an ear to listen or for a hug and a smile those are very important we can use lots of those um, we don't need someone to give advice or to question us unless it is genuine questions wanting to know more about MS and we especially don't need people to judge us um, there's a lot of judgmental people out there unfortunately and you know, it's not just with this, you know, that goes for a lot of things, unfortunately. Um, so, you know, you know, we do get judged, I think, a lot because people don't under fully understand it and they can't see what's going on inside of our bodies. So they only go by appearance. Um, what we really need is just a strong support system from our family and friends. Um, I know that's hard for some people because a lot of people don't have that. Um, I'm very fortunate actually to have a pretty good support system. Um, I know it's even hard though for my family and my friends to understand and you know I know sometimes you know I wish the support was a little better at times but I understand also because I know it's hard for them to understand and I know that most of them try to understand so but for the most part I'm I'm very blessed um, you know to have a really good support system so now to actually talk to you about my own personal journey and challenges that I've experienced along the way. Um, 
and I, like I said, I, I apologize too because I'm kind of stumbling a little bit on words. Um, well, it's a little better today. Um, and you, you know, I've had a little bit of the droopiness I, and stuff in my eye, but, um, so anyway, when looking back, um, there were first noticeable symptoms back in about 2008 or 2009 when I was working for a local primary and urgent care clinic, um, which I'm not going to give the name, but, um, most people who know me know where it was because a lot of my good friends, we worked together. And I had a very physically demanding job. Um, I was actually working in medical records. I know when you hear that, it doesn't sound very demanding and especially physically demanding. But my job function was, um, it was a very different situation. I was required to do an awful lot of stuff that normal people don't usually have to do. Um, so, you know, put a lot of wear and tear on my body and different things. Um, so anyway, um, you know, it, it, it required constant running around, which literally I did do a lot of actual running around the office <laughs> and also, you know, a lot of heavy lifting, um, carrying heavy things, um, standing, stepping up on ladders and step stools. Um, I always had to do a lot of squatting and kneeling also. Uh, I had already been working there for about nine years. So to start having wear and tear on my body was not at all surprising. So... I started noticing when I squatted down or knelt down to get charts, I was um, having increasing difficulty trying to get back up to standing. I had to like start pushing my hands or like walking my hands up my legs all the way up to my thighs till I got into a standing position, kind of push myself up. Um, I know it's kind of hard to explain, but... Um, that's the only way I can really explain it. And um, it was like, you know, of course I was having weakness and in my legs and difficulty with stiffness. And even like when I would step up on the step stools or a ladder or what have you, um, it just seemed like it was getting more difficult. Um, so I never really thought anything about it. I just kept kind of sloughing it off as wear and tear on my body, you know, um, or sore muscles, you know, nothing really out of the ordinary. Um, then in 2010, um, just before I left that job, I was um, actually having more problems with like energy, you know, just trying to keep going. Um, you know, it took all I, I could you know, muster up just to, you know, keep myself moving. Um, I just, you know, I wanted to, like, just not even be on my feet at all. Um, I went to, um, you know, uh, um, you know, but again, you know, when I started, that started happening, I just kind of, passed it off, you know, um, you know, like it was no big deal. Um, then also in 2010, um, I went to work for the hospital, um, in one of the specialty offices. Um, I was becoming more and more tired, which actually was fatigue. <laughs> um, I found myself drinking more coffee, uh, drinking Coke, uh, trying smoothies with energy boosters, um, and even sometimes drinking energy drinks. Um, you know, and I was getting frustrated because nothing was nothing was working. Um, I was just having a hard time trying to keep moving and and staying alert. Um, you know, I just. Uh, felt worn out and just felt like I just wanted to go to sleep. Um, you know, my body just 
couldn't even move. I kept passing it off, though, as, as stress from the workplace at the time. Um, so then in 2012, I started noticing some pain in my left front thigh at times. And, and even when I was like on the couch, um, you, you know, I just thought it was the way I was sitting um, because it just felt like, you know, muscle ache or cramps, um, even though it was getting starting to get a little painful. Um, when I got my cancer diagnosis in late 2012, I was at one of my surgeon appointments and he asked me the typical question, um, especially because, you know, they want to make sure it hadn't spread or anything like that. So it was before I had like my PET scan and all that kind of stuff. Um, but he asked me the typical question if I was having any pain in my legs and different things. So of course I, you know, told him yes I I was and you know explained to him about the pain and um, that it was just you know in that thigh um, at the at the time I thought it was just probably muscular pain so again I just passed it off um, you know nobody really thought too much about it um, and then you know I for so long I had not felt good off and on and you know I really when I look back even in my pictures and stuff I just really didn't even look that great either um, of course I don't look so great now I look old <laughs> but anyway I you know I, I like I said I never really felt good off and on for you know quite often and for for quite a while actually and you know I just felt generally ill um, you know, I had other s serious health, um, things going on as well as the cancer at the time. Um, so I figured, you know, I would start feeling much better, um, after all the surgeries and, you know, and hopefully my anemia would get straightened out and all kinds of, you know, kinds of things. So I figured I, you know, I, I was kind of looking forward to all that, you know, thinking I'm, I will feel a lot better. Um, you know, at the time, I, I actually had um, three major surgeries all at once. And then um, exactly four weeks later, I had another surgery, um, which was completely unrelated to all that that was going on. So... You know, I was due to go back to work and um, because that was all in um, November. That all happened in November of 2012 and December of 2012. And then I was supposed to go back to work because um, I was off, I think, like six or eight weeks. I can't quite remember. Um, I think it was like eight weeks I think I was off work. I had to be off work. Um, and so I was due to go back... Um, to work in February, like first part of February of 2013. Just just before I was due to go back, I started feeling very sick again and was having a lot more problems with stiffness in my leg and um, my lab work still was all out of whack. And I was starting to have a lot of problems with edema. Um, just at that time it was just in one leg which was like my left leg I believe um, as time went on um, symptoms just became worse and new problems arose and then in 2013 I started seeing my neurologist again um, which I had seen in the past for my seizures um, so he knew my history and after a complete evaluation and further you know blood workup and other testing um, he felt it was MS um, and it, because everything led to that and you know he felt it was MS and of course obviously we had everything else ruled out um, and he continued to follow through with me and still does um, eventually I started having uh, problems with blurred vision, double vision, and pain in my left eye. And um, 
obviously he knew there was a problem so um, I was referred back to my ophthalmologist and because for what is called an evoked uh, or a visual evoked potential test um, because he does them at his office um, and it's the only place around here that actually does them um, so that's it's a special uh, test I don't know I I don't really I can't explain it off the top of my head but um, you know it checks for s very specific things um, and also you wear electrodes on your scalp um, like you're having it is like having an EG because they also measure brain waves um, all kinds of things so anyway after all that um, it turns out um, when he eventually read the results and, and got him back to my neurologist here um, my test was very abnormal in fact it was about as abnormal as you could possibly get um, it was also suggestive of optic neuritis as well um, in my left eye um, the the treatment for this but only it can only be treated in if it's still in acute stage if it's past the initial stage or the acute stage um, it will no long it um, treatment will no longer do any good so if it's still in the acute stages um, th the treatment for that is very high doses of um, steroids so IV steroids that is so I had to go every day for four days to the hospital um, and get infusions the side effects were horrible because they were such high doses um, it's not like taking typical you know the pill form um, these this is much different and like I said it was very high doses um, and normally you can recover from optic neuritis and you know get your get vision back to normal or near normal unfortunately mine never did return to normal um, I have permanent vision damage and loss um, since then I had it three more times in my left eye um, except for last year I had it in both eyes so that would have been actually the third time for my left um, and you know my vision has always been really bad um, for years and actually I, since I was very young but um, you know I've always had very very bad vision but unfortunately because of all this um, I have lost more vision especially in my left eye um, there's been changes in my right too but because my left eye has been affected so many times um, I've lost a lot more vision in that eye and also my peripheral vision has gotten worse so um, I have a lot of loss of peripheral vision as well um, and also um, I have I also have cataracts in both eyes too which is of course unrelated to the MS but you know that do doesn't help obviously my vision any um, and they've gotten worse but um, they're not to the point where they need to be surgically removed just yet so as soon as they are um, you know definitely they will be done so um, for the most part though I, I actually just saw my ophthalmologist not very long ago and right now um, thank goodness my vision is stable um, for the moment uh, which is good news because that's probably the first time I've heard it was stable um, of course the last time I went 
it wasn't so um and unfortunately too vision problems and blindness are complications of ms um, in 2014, I was referred to the MS clinic at Barrow Neurological Institute in Phoenix, uh, one of the best best places ever. I eventually um, I eventually went through more testing, and um, including a lumbar puncture, and um, although there was like certain things that showed up in my spinal fluid that were suggestive um, so I feel like I'm gonna choke um, <clears throat> and uh, you know there was also a lot of things that weren't so typical so eventually over time the doctor did feel it was primary progressive MS because I've had I have had like no um, like remissions or anything you know it's it's just been a steady course from the very beginning and I constantly of course have follow-up appointments um, down there at Barrows and of course up here with my neurologist up here because he follows me also in between um, which is good for everything um, also for the seizures and all kinds of stuff so that way you know um, he still continues to follow me if something happens to me up here or you know or sometimes you know if I need it right away he can make a change or do whatever you know he needs to as well and you know of course they're um, in contact with each other as well so um, everybody knows what's going on <laughs> and in addition to constant follow-up appointments of course there's regular MRIs um, of the brain and cervical spine um, because that's usually where a lot of the lesions will be brain um, spinal cord which is most mostly the lesions are going to show up pri uh, mostly in your cervical spine um, and then of course your optic nerves and and of course I've also had a lot of physical therapy over time too um, so you know it helps for me uh, somewhat but not entirely but you know definitely it helps you know keep me as mobile as possible um, I experience more noticeable problems with walking uh, spasticity and coordination at that time it became harder to walk and my doctors noticed my gait getting worse I did okay for a while but then started using a cane in 2013 to help um, with a little bit more sp stability especially when we went somewhere um, you know so like a walking through a parking lot or what have you it does you know anytime we went somewhere so that way um, it did give me a little bit more stability and you know I didn't even use it at work for quite a while uh, even though I had great walking difficulties um, but I didn't use it because partly because I was a little stubborn I guess um, but I was also afraid of you know just being asked questions because at this point nobody really knew too much um, you know they knew there was problems but didn't really know um, too much but um, I, you know I was afraid of being asked questions and afraid of what people might say or think I was also afraid of being you know treated differently I eventually did use the cane though at work I, you know I st got brave enough and I actually started using it and you know like I said I didn't really tell anybody for a while um, you know and then eventually I started having more problems with coordination balance thought speech memory 
Also, my tremors were uh, starting to get worse. Um, the itching became really bad, and that's from damaged nerves, and it's very uncontrollable itching. Um, but I had, you know, like I said, my tremors were getting worse, and they were in my hands, legs, and my head. Um, I started uh, using a walker in 2014, but I still continue to only use the cane at work. I was having a lot more balance problems at the time, but I did, did manage. Um, I know people started noticing things more as well at work um, as time went on. And I eventually, I eventually had to tell them for sure, even though they knew for a while kind of what was going on and that it was, that it was a possibility um, by this time. Uh, once I told my supervisor, however, um, everything seemed to change very quickly. Um, the whole attitude was different. Um, I was treated very poorly. Um, my review time came shortly after that, and I got a very poor review. Probably the worst ones I've ever gotten in my entire life in any workplace, even at my worst jobs. Um, and, you know, when all my prior ones uh, for that job e even were excellent. Um, so then all of a sudden I just get this poor review. Um, definitely not a coincidence. Um, you know, they would constantly nitpick every, every little thing. It, I mean, it just, everything just changed so quickly. Um, it was like between, you know, difference between night and day, you know, and I was getting talked to all the time. Um, it just seemed like no matter what I did, it wasn't going to be the right thing. So, um, there was also a lot of backstabbing, um, which started making it much, uh, more stressful and difficult to, you know, be there, um, and, you know, there's just so much negativity. Um, and yet, I mean, and that only comes from, that only came from about two people. Um, the rest of the people were awesome that I worked with. Um, couldn't ask, ask for any, any better. Um, you know, they, they, the rest of them actually treated me very respectful. Um, you know, and so, like I said, it became more stressful and yet, even though she always gave me a hard time, I was still asked to do parts of her job and always went above and beyond just as I did with all, all my jobs, even at my worst jobs, I still did it. Anyway, that's just who I am. Um, not, you know, was never trying to score brownie points. It's just the way, it's just my work ethics. Um, in 2015, I started having short blackout spells. Um, but that actually didn't come until after, um, after I was there. Um, I eventually stopped working. And so these blackout spells didn't really come until later although and I had like um, brief um, drops in oxygen levels um, and e which eventually um, led to another EEG for my brain um, you know first it was discussed with my pulmonologist too because I, I have so many lung problems too and you know um, we thought maybe because, you know, the drops in oxygen and things like that made sure it wasn't coming from the lungs. So, um, you know, he checked everything there, um, and things. And so it was not coming from my lungs. Um, and he felt too, it was coming from my brain. So he suggested that I talk to my neurologist and have him order an EEG. So that's exactly what I did. And so... Once I had that done, it actually revealed I was having seizures again. 
um, unfortunately, after being seizure free for four years before that. Um, you know, I was first diagnosed with uh, seizures at um, somewhere around 15 years ago. I, I'm maybe even 16 years ago. I can't quite remember, but um, they know I was probably having seizures long before that. Um, that's just when it, you know, everything. I was actually tested and, you know, the ball got rolling. So, you know, I became, over time, I became pretty good at hiding my tremors and other things, you know, when I was at work, um, you know, just with some of the movements I made and different things, I got very clever. Um, because I didn't want any chatter behind my back. I've already had enough of that. And also, too, because I was just kind of... I, w I was somewhat embarrassed and also I didn't want patients seeing me like that as well and you know I just didn't want a lot of questions asked and so like I said I got very good at hiding it so um, you know whether not people could tell or not but I I know a lot of them couldn't so um, in March of 2015 uh, per the hospital's recommendation and other reasons um, and also from the orders from my doctors um, I went out on uh, the Family Medical Leave Act um, so I went out on medical leave for you know a full three months which actually ended up turning into permanent disability um, so, you know, I basically had, was told also, you know, if I didn't have, if I didn't take this leave, I mean, this was be being told to me by supervisors and stuff, if I didn't take this leave, that my job would be in jeopardy. So... And, of course, the doctors didn't want me really working anymore anyway. In fact, the year before that, one of my doctors was already ready to take me out of work. And I wasn't ready. Um, I didn't, you know, I just didn't want that, that yet. Um, so, you know, once once I stopped working, you know, it was really difficult at first. Um because I'm so used to working and I've never really been without a job. Um, you know, there was only, I think, a couple times when I briefly, you know, like <laughs> maybe like a week or so, you know, because when I was changing a job or something. Um, so, sorry, I'm biting my lip. Um, I got a lot of inflammation right now. And you know, so it it was hard. It was a big change for me. Um, so I felt very lost. Um, you know, and I was always a very hard worker in any job that I did, even with the ones that treated me lousy um, over the years, and you know, under different circumstances, I still always worked very hard. And I wouldn't say I was a workaholic because I really wasn't a workaholic. Um, you know, I just I just always did what I was told and and worked very hard. Um, you know, that's that's the way I've always been taught. You know, from very young. You know, you work hard. And you know, I that's the way my work ethics were. You know, I put my all into it and learned anything that I ever could. But anyway, besides, you know, feeling lost and, you know, I would I would get even a little depressed at times. Um, of course, I also worried a lot about how we were going to make it. And in fact, that struggle still goes on even three years later. Um, things, you know, never even really changed at work either until 
until they were told. And I even had a comment made to me, um, well, you're never going to get any better anyway, so, um, which was very hurtful and, you know, they can't determine that. They don't know what my course of this disease is going to be. Um, so, you know, it, it changed dramatically, you know, at that point. Um, you know, I have realized, though, that it has all been a blessing in disguise. And, you know, now, of course, I'm able, you know, I'm free to do whatever I want or need to and whenever I want. Um, you know, it's, it's nice because I... You know, I don't have to keep asking for time off to go to doctor's appointments and all this and that, which is a good thing um, because I see quite a few doctors and it's constant doctor's appointments. Um, so, you know, I've, I've since that time, since I stopped working, which was three years ago this month, I had a progression even in the last two to three years. And, of course, even more so even in the last year. I walk with a walker all the time since, well, since 2015. I really started walking with a walker in 2014. But, um, you know, considering when I used a cane at work and stuff, you know, um, since 2015, I've used the walker continuously. And also even have a, a used a wheelchair on occasion. Uh, when when absolutely needed to um, you know I've been to physical therapy many times and they even notice the changes every time I'm there um, you know for the worse um, I always you know for everybody who knows me knows that I always try to be a very positive person and you know try to look at the good things and you know and, and try to be strong um, but I admit even with my strong faith um, it can sometimes get the best of me and it can be very difficult um, most of my symptoms I deal with continuously 24-7 uh, um, while there are a few that I deal with some of the time um, I never, you know, get any breaks or, re, you know, from from the symptoms um, or, you know, any remissions. Um, you know, some of the things, well, actually quite a few of the things that I deal with are seizures, uh, bladder and bowel problems, other uh, gastrointestinal problems, uh, terrible tremors in my hands, legs, and head. Um, slurred speech um, or problems trying to find words in fact I have been mistaken for being drunk um, before I do get strange looks um, especially with the balance and then you add the slurred speech and um, you know it does it does you know when it happens you know to MS patients it you know people do think we're drunk um, I also suffer from severe weakness in my legs arms and hands uh, spasticity and also spasms in my feet legs arms and hands uh, muscle twitches um, it, especially to my upper arms and a lot in my thighs um, which is different, completely different from spasms. Um, they don't, they don't hurt like spasms, <laughs> um, but they still are very annoying. Um, also, severe problems with balance, and have had many falls. Um, with, of course, my most recent one being like two or three weeks ago, which I know most of you know about. Um, I get uncontrollable itching all over. Um, in fact, I had terrible itching this morning. Um, you know, you get it 
in your ears, your head, your back, your stomach, your feet, every, I mean all over your body. And it's not typical itching like, you know, for most people. You get an itch, you scratch it. Or you get an itch, you use anti-itch cream. Or you take Benadryl or something. You can't do that for this type of itching. This type of itching is caused because of faulty nerves. Um, so there's there's nothing that takes care of it. Although one of the medications I do take for symptoms um, helps with nerve pain, but it also helps with with the itching. Um, so you know I have severe pain. Uh, most all the time and of course there's pain 24 7 um, anyway so I always I have pain every second of the day um, all over but you know severe pain I get quite often um, you know sometimes it can be just one type of pain um, sometimes also I get a combination of pain which is uh, pins and needles, numbness and tingling, muscle pain, bone pain, and feeling like my skin is just being ripped off my legs. And when I say that, it literally feels like somebody is just literally ripping the skin off my legs. Um, it's a very painful feeling. You know, I get a lot of burning sensations, um, especially in my legs. Um, sometimes even, um, the material, like, from my clothing, um, touching my skin can be extremely painful. Um, it just makes me not even want to wear anything. Um, it's, it's that bad. Um, there's been times, too, where, um, which was a new symptom, which I just started experiencing, experiencing like six months ago five months ago maybe um which i told them down at barrels but i uh in my upper thighs and you know the front part of my thigh um in both of them actually um it just felt like there was glass in my legs or something um it just it hurt so bad and and I didn't want clothing touching. It was different than the other type of pain that I have where, you know, I can't stand clothing touching. But this was a lot different. It was a whole different sensation. And, it, you know, I couldn't figure out, you know, I thought, am I, did I get bit? Because at first it was just one leg, you know, it was one area. And then, you know, then it eventually went to the other one. Um, and, you know, it's just... Oh, absolutely horrible feeling um, like somebody just kept sticking glass in me or something um, you know I also experienced some mild depression and anxiety at times not all the time um, but you know it's a result of seizures and some of the other symptoms um, of course I suffer vision problems um, headaches memory and thought difficulty um, you know I get distracted very easily also um, you know and it's really hard sometimes carrying on a conversation because I will just stop right in the middle of a sentence or you know the conversation totally forget what I was even saying um, you know there's been times also where I've rambled on and I didn't even know what I was saying it, it just made absolutely no sense and the words made no sense um, this has happened to me a few times um, which is frustrating and sometimes I don't even know I'm doing it um, also of course you know I have problems completing tasks you know I just um, just simple things that I used to do I just um, you know like paying the bills and different things you know I mean um, you know there's just 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 a lot of simple things like that um, of course I also suffer terrible fatigue um, 
I do have swallowing problems. They're not severe yet, but um, I do have a lot more swallowing problems. Um, even just like little tiny, tiny pills that I've had to take. Sometimes I just can't even get them down. Or, you know, I feel like something's always like stuck in the back of my throat. Um, and, you know, I, I, I choke a lot also. Um, that's another thing, you know, that can happen. And, you know, it's basically choking on air. I mean, there's no reason for it. I just, all of a sudden, we'll just start choking. Um, you know, of course. Um, and then, because of coordination problems and tremors, um, I a lot of times have trouble, like, when I'm eating or drinking something. Um, because I can't steady my hands or, you know, because of the coordination and things. I drop food all over. I miss my mouth. It'll be down my chin, you know, be on, you know, drip, dripping some, you know, or, um, you know, I'll just drop everything. Um, that's another thing, you know, I just can't hang on to things. I don't have strength in my hands and so, or coordination. And so I drop things all the time and it's frustrating. Um, and then I get what is called the MS hug and it is actually, that is actually what it's called is MS hug, um, which is not a very good hug. It's not the type of hug I would like to get. Um, this type of hug is very painful, squeezing and pressure in your upper torso kind of around your diaphragm and you know but it's to your upper torso and you know like around your back um, but it feels like the whole front you know front of you is just um, literally yeah being squeezed as hard it possibly could um, and you know like I said it's it's very painful um, it does kind of take your breath away so you know um, it caught you know it, it makes it harder to breathe um, it makes you feel really sick um, and so you, you know it's not unusual to get nauseated and things like that um, I also suffer from both heat and cold toler intolerance. Sorry. <laughs> um, so even when the temperature changes, even in the slightest, um, it makes my symptoms worse. So I also have to be careful, you know, in the shower and stuff, um, you know, with the hot water. Um, and so. You know that that's also why I like fall the best um, out of all the seasons because um, you know the temperatures are much easier in the fall and you know have less problems out of any other time of the year and then also some s strange symptoms that I get are um, and my doctors have actually seen pictures of it because we've taken a picture when it has happened, um, and it does happen often, um, is I get a lot of droopiness in my eyes. Um, my left eye is actually the worst. I have, I don't know if you could hear that whistle. Sometimes when I talk lately, I've been, it's like a little whistle coming out. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, but for some reason it happens more in my left eye. I get a lot of droopiness and it's very noticeable. And also I get droopiness to one side of my mouth. And but what's strange about that is I get usually the droopiness is in my left eye, but I usually get the droopiness in the right side of my mouth. Um and so it's kind of like actually it kind of looks like when somebody's having a stroke and but I'm not <laughs> I also have a lot of problems with edema and lymphedema um, 
you know, I know with MS too, you can also have problems with edema, but also um, because I have a lot of chronic health conditions, um, you know, kidney problems, uh, GI problems, which I just had a recent surgery for that. And of course, um, with my kidney, I have a mass on my right kidney, which I've had for a while, which is, they follow through. Um, of course, the seizures and you, just um, lung problems, all kinds of all kinds of different things. Actually, there's about a million different things. <laughs> well, that's exaggerating, obviously, but it feels like it. Um, and so, because of a lot of these chronic health di conditions, there's a lot of symptoms with that. That is also symptoms with the MS. So sometimes it's hard to know when things kind of cross that line. And so it's just like a vicious circle all the time. And so it's kind of hard to know sometimes when, um, you know, if something's acting up with one of my other conditions because, um, like I said, there's so many different, different things that um, have some of the same symptoms. And, you know... Some of my doctors keep telling me I'm at high risk for certain things, um, especially blood clots. And, of course, I've had a, a few now, uh, uh, pulmonary embolism, my last one in November. And when I was in the hospital, or I was actually discovered right before I left the hospital. Um, but that's not what I was in there for. Um, and so, you know... Doctors tell me a lot of times with a lot of these different things that I'm at high risk for, you know, watch out for this, you know, if this happens, da, 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 you know, so on and so forth. And I always question, I'm like, well, how am I supposed to know when, especially I already have a lot of these symptoms on a normal basis? And they're like, well, you'll know because it'll be a lot worse. And I'm like, well, sometimes it is hard to know, you know when to go to the R, when not to go to the R, when, you know, um, you know, I'm not going to be no hypochondriac and go over for every little thing, you know, but. Okay, so I was doing this video and the darn thing froze up. Um, so, you know, I see so many specialists because of all these different conditions and diseases. And so with my primary care doctor, I see about a total of 10 different doctors. Um, you know, so at least 9 or, you know, I might even see 11. Um, so anywhere from 9 to 10 of those are specialists. Um, some of them in the same field, but, um, you know, it's different, uh, different things. Um, so, uh, like I said, you know, my most recent fall was just like a couple weeks ago. Um, you know, also to, um, I get terrible dizzy spells, um, but you know they were they were, weren't too bad for a while but just in about the last two months I guess it has been I had an increase in dizzy spells they got much worse um, quickly so great my son's coming out of his room so you can hear his door creaking um, so also because of this my neurologist did recently did a uh, another MRI just to make sure everything's okay and thank goodness it was stable compared to my last one um, I also you know have to have help at times because it's very difficult for me so I have to have help um, with dressing sometimes you know buttoning is really hard for me um, so, you know, sometimes I have to help, you know, with my shirts or um, even sometimes with shoes I've had to have help before. Um, 
just depending on, you know, how bad I am. Uh, putting on a coat sometimes is difficult, and um, it's it still is, and that's kind of always um, the thing, so I have to have help with that. Um, I've had to help have help getting out of the bathroom before because I got so overheated. Um, all my muscles, in my, I mean my muscles throughout my legs um, and my arms and my hands were completely spasmed. My hands were completely curled up and in a weird position and I couldn't move and I was in so much pain and I just, it, it was awful. So my husband had to come and help me. Um, it was, it was pretty scary. And so, anyway, that's a lot what I deal with. Um, I know there's a lot more, but I've said enough. Um, you know, I know this is a lot to take in and is more detailed than probably what I originally planned. Um, but I'm hoping this will help you understand just kind of the basics of MS and just understand me and my journey and, you know, what I've been going through and just to understand me as a person that I am now because I'm not the same as I used to be. Um, you know, I'm not looking for sympathy or pity. Um, you know, I don't even hold my own pity parties. That's just it's not happening because um, it doesn't do any good. Um, you know, I'm just looking for support and understanding, um, as most MS patients are. Although I never thought in my wildest dreams that I would ever be dealing with this. Um, you know, I mean, this has been one of the hardest things I think I've had to deal with in my life. Um, you know, when I went through my cancer, it was hard, but, you know, with that, I knew I was going to get better. With this, you know, I know I'm not going to get better. Um, you know, it's only going to get progressively worse over time. And so, you know, it was, it's been a lot harder to deal with, and probably the hardest thing to deal with is losing a lot of my independence. Um, that's probably been the most difficult for me. Um... You know, because I've always been a very independent person, you know, did everything for myself. And so, you know, losing a lot of that, um, you know, I haven't totally lost independence completely, but, you know, I do still have a little bit, but, you know, I have lost quite a bit. Um, so it's very difficult, you know, being taken care of. It's very difficult asking for help or needing help. And, for most people who know me, I'm stubborn and I don't, I've never been a person that has ever liked to ask for help. Um, and it's not because I'm proud or anything like that, it's just the way I am. And so that's, you know, been a hard thing. Um, so, you know, like I said, the independence has been, been the worst thing of it all. And, you know, but like I said, I never thought I would ever be dealing with this. But in ways, I am blessed at the same time for going through this. Um, because it has taught me more about myself. Um, you know, I, I've learned a lot more about myself um, through this whole process. And... and um, learn to be a little bit more patient and tolerant and things. Um, you know, my faith, of course, is what keeps me fighting and gives me the courage and strength to face each and every day. Um, great. Now you can hear my dog walking across the floor. I used to take, you know, a lot of things for granted, you know, like, you know, just basic things like walking and talking, thinking, eating, dressing, um, you know, just basic things like that. But when you lose some of those abilities or have to learn them in a new way, uh, you know, learn a new way of doing them, it puts a lot of things into perspective. Um, there have many, been many different um, abilities that I am no longer able to do or task. Um, 
But in all of this, though, I have also found a new hobby, which I love doing, and I can express myself, and in which has taught, I actually taught myself how to do it, and that is making videos. Um, of course, I don't make videos like this. I think I've only done it like once or twice. Most of what I do is inspirational videos, um, awareness videos. I do special videos for my family and special occasions. Um, you know, trivia videos, things like that. Those, that's kind of what I do. So, like video slideshows type of things. Um, so, but it, you know, that's finding that new hobby has helped me. Sorry, my son's walking around in the background. I can see him, so that's very distracting. Um, so that you know helps keep my mind, you know active and everything so um, I hope that you like this and um, sorry it was long you know thank you all for watching and I appreciate all the support um, and prayers <laughs>